Okay. This is the one. Good morning and welcome to our online service on YouTube and it is such a privilege to have you joining us and for us to still be able to have church online, church together. So thank you for joining us and also the Queen of Joburg, Miss Mbali, Mrs. Mbali. Miss. Miss, <laughs> Miss Mbali is joining us and um, Mbali, don't you just want to say hi and introduce yourself? Hi everybody, I am Bali. I'm not the Queen of Joburg, that's a heavy title, imagine. She is just being modest, but she does, <laughs> she does have a trophy um, that she refuses to take off her shelf that says <laughs> Queen of Joburg. <laughs> but it is our privilege to have her joining us and we just want to give you a little bit of context about um, our tree ministry, ministry. So if you don't know what tree is, tree is our way of impacting the next generation um, school learners teachers as well everybody in the educational environment and Mbali is actually a youth coach in our tree ministry so we thought it would be cool to just give her a moment to talk a little bit about what she does exactly in her school okay so what we do is that we planted there um, just to help build a healthy environment for the school teachers and for the learners um, and just being around so, we, so that we can be able to pray mm. for the next generation to come. Yeah, and it's such a crucial role for us. Um, we do have two youth coaches. We have Mbali and then we also have Lizzie. And both of them are planted in schools in our environment. And what I want you to see is that the contribution that you are making financially to this church is not only for this congregation, but you are really influencing uh, a community around you. And it's because of your generosity that we get to influence schools and the next generation. So thank you for giving. If you want to give, um, there will be the details on the screen for you to do so. And thank you for always being faithful in your giving and also trusting God in your giving, knowing that He is our provider. He has the final say and He is not limited to any resources at all. We also have a um, process coming up and we are super excited for it. It is called Follow. And it's really focused on making disciples of Jesus. So we would like to invite you to become a part of that. And we would like you to invite someone to also become a part of that. And it's really about equipping you and equipping you to equip people. Yeah. You see that chain happening. Yeah. Uh -huh. So equipping you to equip people to really make disciples and be disciples of Jesus. Yes, we also have City Changes. If you are in a position of leadership or you'd like to contribute in the leadership of the church, then please um, come through. Yes. There's also um, a video clip that's going to play after the service if you're interested for more details. Yes, the slide will be there and you will see all the info that you need to know about the City Changers evening. Yes. Yes. Um, so right now we're going to have the word and right after the word there's going to be a moment of worship. So please stay tuned. Good morning and it is so great to be here with you again today um, at our online service. Now, I don't know about you, but this past week has been, it's been crazy, but it has been so good just to experience life again, to experience some form of, of heat again with it being so cold a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, I hope you had a blessed week and uh, I hope you're ready for the message today. Uh, we are extremely excited about what's ahead um, in the campus. If you want to know more, wait right up until the end. You will find out more uh, or go visit our website over there. Now today, I want us to talk about a very interesting topic and I've got a very interesting question for you today. And this is the question. What is the world's biggest desire right now, would you, would you, would you say? What is the world's biggest desire? What is everyone in this world? What do everyone in the world, what do they desire above all else? It might be family. It might be money. It might be power. It might be something of a status to say, listen, this is who I am. I've made it to the top of this mountain. I've climbed on top of people to get there, you know, or I've made all of this money over the years and it is great because now I have power. You know, now I can buy whatever I want. 
This past week I watched a video of this lady. She uh, took over her family business and uh, she showed the people her garage and it is Bentley, 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 Ferrari, 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 <laughs> Ferrari, Ferrari, <laughs> just in her own garage. And she said this is what she's dreamt of all her life. This is her biggest desire. Now today I want to ask you, what do you think is the world's biggest desire? And maybe let's make it a bit more practical. What is your biggest desire in life right now? Now, according to studies over the past years, uh, especially over this past year that we've been through from 2020 to 2021, the biggest desire that people have is love. <laughs> you know, it is love. It is to be loved. It is to give love. It is to experience this thing of love in the world that is broken, in a world that has pain, in a world, in a city where you just see pain all around you, where you just experience pain wherever you go. The biggest desire that people have right now is love. So my question to you is, what is your biggest desire? Do you desire love above all else? Or have you been hurt maybe by love? through love, through someone you thought that loved you. We've all been there. Now, we, when we think about love, we equate it to, usually we equate it to, you know, I'm finding a person, I date that person, I love that person, and then my heart gets broken. And then we just relive that all over again until we eventually find the one to love <laughs> who says yes when we ask them to marry us. However, love is so much more than that. Love was given to us as a promise from God, but love was also given to us to not just take, but to give in this world. Love is a habit we should practice each and every day. Now, we have mentioned this before, but the whole idea behind Dr. Deo, the whole vision and mission that we have has to do with impacting the world, impacting glow, or imp putting down God's presence, His transforming presence, in global cities, especially here in the city of Johannesburg, where we are situated. You know, in the city of, of Rudeburg, in the city or in the, the little suburb of Volkheibel, of Honeydew, of, you know, Florida, of Rudeburg, of Krugersdorp. We've all been put in a place to love that area. Now, we've been asked a very spe specific request from God. I don't know if you know this, but this specific request has to do with us going into the world, loving the people in the world as we love ourselves. But that starts with the love of God. So the scripture says that love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your might and love the people as you love yourself. We know this. We've heard this. However, the reality is we found this to be very difficult sometimes. We found this to be troublesome sometimes. We found this to be something that is not as easy as we predicted. Because people. Because people. It's plain and simple. Now, we've been called into a life of love. Um, and I want, to, I want to distinguish or I want to differentiate between what is truly love as it was mentioned in the Bible not just between me and my wife or me and my family or me and my friends, but what is love truly the way that God intended it? Because scripture says in 1 John, it says, plain and simple, God is love. That's it. If we ever wanted to know what love is, that is it. God is love. If we have God, we have love. And if we have love, we are supposed to have God. If we love in the correct form. If we express love in the correct form. Now, we are talking about love today, but I want to draw it specifically to a very specific area, a very um, important aspect of our lives, and that is to love your city, to love your city where you are, the city of Johannesburg right now, or Pretoria, or the Free State, Bloemfontein, or Durban, or Cape Town, or wherever you might be, but we've been called to love our city, to change our city, to impact our city through love. Now, if you go into Johannesburg, if you go into the city center, well, even if you just go to a shopping mall around you, what do you normally see? Do you notice 
people that are in pain. I'm talking now about the people that are homeless, the people that are starving, the orphans, the widows. I'm talking about people that are walking around with all this baggage on them, people that are broken emotionally, maybe physically. I'm talking about a person who has lost their job in the past couple of months, maybe. Someone who has lost their family members over the past month or two. I'm talking about the people that are carrying pain. I'm talking about you that is also carrying pain. I'm talking about you and I'm talking about the city. I'm talking about the pain that people experience. How do we address this pain? How do we fix this pain? How do we do something about this pain? If God, if Jesus told us that we should love the people around us, that we should go into a city and love, love the people around us. Now, I want to start off with this point, with this first point. And this point is, love is a gift to you, but also love is a promise. What do I mean by that? I mean that when God came to, when God sent his son Jesus Christ to earth, he sent him with the intention of restoring balance, of restoring the relationship between us and the Father, about restoring that love connection we have with him through the ultimate sacrifice. Remember that word, sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice of his own son dying in our place. Now, when I say love is a gift, when I say love has to be a habit, this is what I mean. That wherever you go, that you would love unselfishly. We receive love from God. We experience His love as church. We experience His love as His children. Now, we cannot be selfish with that love and just keep it to ourselves. Scripture says, John 15 verse 12, This is my commandment. That you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. The scripture is, is simple. The scripture opens up so much for us that if we see our city, if we look at our environment around us, and we don't just stay in this little hole in our homes, and we don't just think about ourselves and what is best for ourselves, but when we open up our eyes to what is going on around us, and we start seeing the pain in our city. We start asking God, Father, show me the pain around me, in my workplace, in my environment, with my neighbors maybe. Father, help me to address that pain and that hurt. We start to notice how we can love the people around us. We start to show or we start to know how to Give that gift of love to the people around us because this is how we will address the pain in our society. The moment that we are able to love the people. If I walk up to a homeless guy, for example, and I just give him a food parcel and I walk away, that's fine. It'll feed his stomach for a moment. It might feed his, his family's stomach for a moment. But you and I have been called to so much more to address the pain by giving the people who Jesus is. By giving the people love, showing them love, being there for them. Think about a family member. Think about a friend around you who's going through a tough time, who's experiencing pain right now for whatever reason. What do they need? They don't need another thing for encouragement they need you they need a person but they also don't need just a person they need you to show them love because if you show them love you are showing them God then people get healed through the love of God then people get healed through a no judgment zone then people get healed through an acceptance because within the love of God we find rest for our souls we find a relief, we find healing. When we think about love, or when we think about the pain in our cities, what do we think about, but also what are we going to do about it? The church isn't called to just sit in a building or at home day in and day out. We've been called to the world out there, to the city out there, to show love out there, 
not just in here. Now, I want to, I want to just read you this quote from Martin Luther King uh, Jr. He says the following, We must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love. And when we do that, we will make of this old and uh, old world a new world. For love is the only way. Love is the only way to address what's going on in this world. Love is the only way to address pain where we are right now. Because if we love someone, we'll take care of them. But more than that, remember that scripture from earlier? Love the Lord your God then love people as you love yourself. The departure point is because I love God. Because I have a passion for God, because I, I love God and He is my source, He is my Savior, He shows me grace now. I can show that to myself and to others. Isn't that crazy when you think about that? We always think it's the other way around. We always think, okay, now I just have to love people. No, start with God, start with His love. Because His love is the only redemptive love that we can give other people. We take His love and just give that to other people. Because if we do it through our own might and through our own spirit, nothing will happen. Nothing lasting will happen. How do we gain this love from God to address the pain of our society? We ask the question, God, show me love. Father, give me your love. Express to me your love. And here's the reality. The death of Jesus has already poured out the love for you that you need. You need to take it as a gift. So now we know love is the foundation of everything. Love is the tool to heal the pain in our society. Love is the tool that we use because then we, we start to develop a heart for people. Because God has a heart for people, so I am going to have a heart for people. Now, I want to ask you, oh, I want to give you a question that you should ask every single day because I understand that there are many times that we have no idea what to do. You know, we're in church, we're fired up, we're passionate, maybe we, we experience something from God, and now we need to go into a world and we need to do something. But what do we do? I'm going to give you two questions that you can ask. Two questions. The first question is, what does love ask of me? What does love ask of me? Remember earlier I said that God is love. So in essence, I'm asking you, what does God require of you? What does God ask of you? When you walk past someone who's in pain, when you encounter someone at your workplace going through a tough time, maybe a divorce, maybe financial troubles, what does love require of you? Does it require that you reach out to that person? Does it require that you maybe just sit with that person and hear what's going on in their life? Does it require for you to maybe intervene into a situation for someone, with someone? Does it require that you just pray for someone? Does it require investments in that person? What does love require of me? It's a very good question to ask. What does love ask of me? Because the reality is the following, that we need to understand that if we do not go into a situation, or if we go into a situation, we simply turn a blind eye away from what is going on, we are missing something of who God is. The second question is that you can ask yourself is, um, and I heard this question actually from um, a pastor in America called Andy Stanley, and he says in one of his books, what tension requires my attention? I'm going to say it again. What tension requires my attention? What is the thing, into my, what is the thing in my society? What is the, the area in my society? What is the area maybe or the person or the, the thing, the, the pain in my, in my environment? What is that tension that requires my attention? When you go into a place, you, you feel this, you hear this, you experience this. Just this urgency to do something about this. Is it something maybe in the education sector? Is it something maybe in the 
in an orphanage or something with widows or homeless people or people that are financially downtrodden, people that are requiring life skills, people that just need food. Vili spoke about it last week, but within our campus, something of a hope project, helping people eat that project about something of the pop-up structure within Johannesburg where we want to equip people with life skills, but also with a skill that they can use to get a job, to better themselves. When we look at our city, what is that thing that pulls me into that situation? What tension requires my attention? There's a story in Luke 19 verse 41, uh, from verse 41 and onwards, where Jesus rides into the, into the Jerusalem on his, on his donkey. And uh, he rides into Jerusalem And he says the following, or the scripture says the following. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. The crazy thing about this is that when Jesus came into the city, he started weeping because he experienced the pain. He experienced the hurt. He experienced the heartache in the city. He experienced Jerusalem, which is supposed to be the city of peace. He came into that city and he experienced something of hopelessness, of pain that wasn't addressed because they didn't realize something. What didn't they realize? Here it is. He says, if you could only, this is verse 42, Um, If you could only recognize that this day peace is within your reach, but you cannot see it. Jesus is weeping because he's seeing people around him. He's noticing how people are not understanding that the promise of who Jesus is, the hope, the love, the, the healing that can take place is right in front of them. But they don't see Jesus. They don't see him. They don't come to him. What happens when we love like Jesus loved? Yes, healing takes place. But there's no point in starting to fix the pain or heal the pain if we don't do it with Jesus. Are we weeping for our city? Are we at a place where we walk into a city center, where we walk into a business and we experience something of, Why am I weeping right now? What is going on in this situation? When we start to love, people experience healing, yes, but also we start to live within God. 1 John 4 verse 17 to 18 says, God is love. When we take a permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house, becomes at home and mature in us. When we start to uh, love our our city, when we start to love the pain and address, or not love the pain, but love the people who are in pain, we start to live within God. I want to end off just with these three points, just these three things to remember, that there is a difference, first of all, there's a difference between loving our city and loving the people in our city. Because the moment that we start to love the people in our city, the city becomes healed. Because the people impact the city. It's very important to remember that. We cannot just love Johannesburg, but not love the people. Here are the three points. If you want to start addressing pain in your environment, we have to have a Romans 12 2 revelation of God transform my mind, God transform my thoughts. Because we have to go from condemning our city, condemning our people, to blessing our people. On um, Wednesday this past week, I encountered something like this. I encountered, um, I went to a specific business up in uh, Volgo Park, And I got there and this guy gave me service uh, or gave me very bad service when I was there. Now immediately I wanted to condemn this guy, I wanted to retaliate because it was very, very rude. 
you know, I kind of felt like I deserve to do this because I'm paying you to help me with something. But in that moment where this guy was being rude with me, I, I felt this, this question within me, what does love require of me now? Love doesn't require that I retaliate. Love requires me to be friendly. Love requires me to show compassion, to show grace. Not to condemn that person, but to bless that person. Second thing is, we need to start building bridges instead of walls. We need to find common ground with people. We need to be able to be salt and light of this earth with the people out there. The third thing, we need to start taking up spiritual responsibility for our regions, for where we are, for our environment, for our spheres of society, within your school, within your neighborhood, within your complex, within your estate, within your, your workplace, your university, wherever you're at. Within your friendship group, you need to start taking res spiritual responsibility with that. Because once again, as Jesus wept when he came into Jerusalem, he took up responsibility for that city. Today, I want us to pray over this for ourselves. I want us to understand that without this, without us be having love from God, we cannot heal the pain in our city. And in essence, we are missing something of who God is. Today, I want to pray for you for that. So if, can I ask that you close your eyes? Father, right now we sit here. And Father, we hear your word. We hear what you're having to say to us. And Father, I ask that you would come into, my, into our hearts, Father. And you would start stirring up something of the pain around us. But also, not just stirring it up, Father, but giving us solutions to how, to we, how can we show you, how can we show love to the people around us? How can we start accepting the people around us? How can we start um, showing grace to the people around us? Because that then, Father, will start um, healing people and showing you. Father, I thank you for this today. I thank you for yourself. I thank you for your sacrifice of your, your son. And Holy Spirit, come lead us today and in the rest of this week and forevermore. Father, we love you because you loved us first. And because of that, I will love my city. Amen. We hope you had a great time with us today. We ask that you would connect with us through our website. Uh, remember, church is open as well, so if you can, join us next week. Uh, but also, go to our website and you'll find all of our info there. We would love to connect with you and uh, take this journey with you as well. Have a blessed week. I am called by His own calling. I'm anointed by His word. I am unctioned by the voice of God. I am purposed by His will. It is now my turn to take a stand Make the difference He demands In the name of God this banner must rise Be courageous and be strong I have a dream I have a dream I yearn to live filled with passion And always be enveloped by hope As I marvel at this flame that burns See the faith and the hope it ignites For the truth and for this dream For the truth and for this dream I am consumed In a perfect place and time See the faultless measured plan Just to lead the way to this vast crusade And surrender to His plan I have a dream I have a dream 
iron to live filled with passion and always be enveloped by hope as i marvel at this flame that burns see the faith and the hope it ignites for the truth and for the street for the truth and for the street i am It is now my turn to take a stand to embrace what he demands in the name of God this banner must rise be courageous and be strong I have a dream I have a dream I yearn to live filled with passion and always be enveloped by hope As I marvel at this flame that burns see the faith and the hope it ignites for the truth and for this dream for the truth and for this dream for the truth and for this dream i am consumed yes i am consumed oh I am called by his own calling I'm anointed by his word I am unctioned by the voice of God I am purposed by his will It is now my turn to take a stand make the difference he demands in the name of God this banner must rise be courageous and be strong i have a dream i have a dream i yearn to live filled with passion and always be enveloped by hope As I marvel at this flame that burns see the faith and the hope it ignites for the truth and for this dream for the truth and for this dream I am consumed in a perfect place and time see the faultless measured plan just to lead the way to this vast crusade and surrender to his plan i have a dream i have a dream I yearn to live filled with passion and always be enveloped by hope As I marvel at this flame that burns see the faith and the hope it ignites for the truth and for the street for the truth and for the street 
Now my turn to take a stand to embrace what he demands in the name of God this banner must rise be courageous and be strong I have a dream I have a dream I yearn to live filled with passion and always be enveloped by hope. As I marvel at this flame that burns, see the faith and the hope it ignites for the truth and for this dream, for the truth and for this dream. For the truth and for this dream, I am consumed. Yes, I am consumed. 